Today, I'm going to show you how to swap people out in Photoshop. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today's episode, special for all of you wedding photographers out there or people who are taking pictures of like a family portrait. Anytime someone's looking a little bit off or like, eh, you know, I'm a bridesmaid and I don't like how I look in this photo. We're going to show you how to switch them out with a different photo. This is a request that photographers get all the time and replacing people in Photoshop is very simple. And we're going to show you how to do it in today's episode. So here's our images for today. We've got some bridesmaids sitting on a bed, being all cute and pretty, and everyone is happy in the photo, except for Jennifer here on the right. She's like, ah, my smile's a little bit weird. Let me find an image that looks a little bit better. And by the way, I have no idea who these people are. This is a stock image from adobestock.com. All right, well, Jennifer likes this picture a little bit better of her, so we're gonna take this picture and we're gonna put it right over here and replace that one. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is turn this into a selection. So I'm gonna grab my marquee selection tool right here, and we're gonna be a little bit generous here. We wanna select a little bit more than what we need. It's gonna give us enough room to blend her with the other photo. So we have her as a selection now. Now all I have to do is grab my move tool and click and drag from one image over to another. See that it's moving it just like that and it's gonna pop it on here in a new layer, which is exactly what we want. Okay, I'm gonna hit F for full screen and let's go ahead and zoom on in to see what we've got. Now we can see we've gotta line her up with the other version of her and she's touching another person. So we really wanna figure out about exactly where she's gonna go before we do our layer mask. And the best way to do that is to lower the opacity of this layer. That way you can see how everything blends together. So let's go ahead and lower the opacity. We're just gonna click on our opacity slider and drag to the left there. And that's gonna give us a really good idea of where she is in relation to everything else in the photo. Then we're gonna use our move tool to kind of put her in place. So I wanna make sure the bed, you know, she can't be too low or too high because we've gotta match her up with the bed. Okay, and then going to the left, we're gonna bring her right about there so she matches up with the other side of this girl's shoulder. Now, as far as her head size goes, you know what, she looks a little bit large right here. So we're gonna hit Command T for transform, and I'm gonna hold down the Shift key and just make her just a little bit smaller. There we go. So now it looks like she's fitting in a little bit better. So we're making her a little smaller, keeping track of the bed, and I'm gonna line up there we go, the shoulder of this girl from one portrait to another. All right, that looks pretty good. Now let's hit enter to apply that transformation and zoom in. Now let's go ahead and bring our opacity up and it's time to blend these together. So we're gonna use a layer mask to blend these two portraits together. So we're gonna start off by clicking on our layer mask button here and I'm gonna paint black on my layer mask with my paintbrush. So let's hit B for the brush tool and then grab our foreground color as black. And basically what I wanna do is get rid of all of my seams. So I'm gonna start painting black right over here and basically just go until I hit an area where my seams kinda of disappear. And this is why it's important to kinda of try to blend areas together. You can see this side of the shirt, there we go, is from one portrait and the other is from another portrait. And if I do a good job blending these two together just by painting black and white on my layer mask, you won't be able to tell where one portrait starts and the other stops. There we go. That looks completely seamless, even though we've got two different images making that portrait. All right, now we're gonna just make this bottom edge a little bit more fuzzy, and then we're gonna go up here and see what we can cover from the rest of our photo. So let's go ahead and paint this away. Now, there is gonna come a point in which we start to see our other subject, and this is the tricky part. Here's where we're gonna use the clone stamp tool to take care of that. So when you're swapping a portrait, it's rare that they're gonna line up perfectly. Most of the time you're gonna have some overlap and you're gonna have to take care of that with a clone stamp tool. So it's really simple here. We're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna hit S for the clone stamp tool and I'm gonna simply start cloning in from the background. So with our clone stamp tool, you wanna make sure you've got a couple of things selected. You want your opacity and your flow at 100%. You want your mode to be normal and here where it says sample, I recommend having current and below. That's gonna allow you to do this on a new layer. Okay, 
Now what we're going to do is hold Alt or Option to sample our point. And then as I bring this down, we're going to see a little preview of what we're actually going to paint. And this helps us align everything. So with my preview active, we're just going to start painting in from the top down to our subject. All right. Now, if you cover up your subject a little bit like I'm doing here, it's not a big deal because we can use a layer mask to blend that in. All right. Let's go ahead and sample up there and bring this in right down there. All right. We're going to do the same thing. Sample up here and start painting in right down there. So again, the goal here is to get everything that's in the background to kind of extend downwards. All right. Now that looks a little bit weird there. Sometimes on a simple background, you can use things like the brush tool to fix that. So I'm going to hit B for the brush tool, and we're going to hold Alt or Option to sample this color here. And then I'm going to just simply paint that away. There we go. And we're just painting in with the background color. And in this case, it's just a white wall. So it's pretty easy to do. Just grab the color and start painting in. All right, we're going to paint in over the hair of the existing portrait here. Again, I'm just using the brush tool now. There we go. And if you need to blend some areas together, just choose a large brush. You can right click, go ahead and increase your size and make sure your hardness is down to zero. There we go. Hold Alt or Option to sample that color and then paint that in and it's going to really allow you to blend one image to another. All right. And to finish it off, let's zoom in here, and we're just going to clone stamp from this area. There we go. Right over here. So the real trick is finding an area that works for your clone stamp, and then just blending that together with the rest of the portrait. All right. Beautiful. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see how that looks. Here's our before and our after. All right, guys, that's the end of today's episode. You can see how simple it is to swap a person out in a photo. Just follow these key steps. First, identify two photos that are very similar. And if you're a photographer, be sure to overshoot a little bit to give yourself more options. Make a selection out of the person you wish to change and copy it from one image to another. Then it's time to lower the opacity and use the transform tool to get it in the perfect place. Be sure to line up other objects like the shoulder of this other girl and the bed to make them perfectly aligned with the other photo. Then it's time to use your layer mask to blend those two photos together. And if there's anything remaining from the original, just grab your clone stamp tool or your brush tool and fill in those details. All right guys, so the next time a client asks if you can swap them out in Photoshop, just say no problem, and then charge them an extra 50 bucks. You're good to go. If you like what we're doing here at Flurn and you want to receive more Photoshop and photography episodes for free, just click on your subscribe button right on the screen. We'll send them right to you. Thanks so much, guys. I'll flurn you later. Bye, everyone. All right, guys, the next time a client asks you if you can swap your heads out, a client asks you, next time you deliver an image to a client and they don't like their face, so the next time a wedding party asks, a client asks, the next time a, cool, just tell them, you can do it. The next time a client asks you if you can swap a photo out, whew, gonna nail it. All right, guys, the next time a client asks you to swap a photo, Ah. All right, guys, the next time a client asks you to swap a photo out, swap a person out, tell them no problem. Tell them, yes, I can. <laughs> that was cheesy as hell. Yes, I can. I can do that. Tell them no problem. That'll be an extra $50, please. Say no problem. It'll be an extra $100, please. All right. <laughs> you don't have to do anything. or we'll keep on coming to you forever. Thanks, guys. I'll <laughs> flirty later. Let's do it one more time. Right now, that subscribe button is we're gonna. All right, yay! Only the tenth time.